Hey, what's going on guys? This is Rogue with Mass Tactical, and I got a special announcement today. As you guys know, I'm a big fan of collaborative learning, and that's what we're all about here with Mask and, and our Warrior Tribe is all about bringing people together and learning collectively. So with that being said, I just wanted to announce that we have brought on a couple of new guest contributors. Uh, this one today being Aaron Brandon with Woogles Outdoors. Um, as you guys know, most of, my, most of the stuff that I do here on the channel is, tends to be more urban, suburban based survival stuff. I don't get as many opportunities to go out in the woods as much as I would like to get into more primitive techniques, but I am going to start doing that a lot more soon. Uh, however, Aaron specializes in a lot of primitive technology, uh, you know, setting traps and snares and, and things of that nature. So I'm happy to announce him today uh, in this video. So stay tuned. He's going to show you guys how to make a pretty awesome bird trap. And remember to go like, comment, and subscribe to his channel as well. And I uh, look forward to seeing some more content from him in the future. I'll catch you guys later. What is up guys? It's Woogle with Woogles Outdoors and we're doing a collaboration with Mass Tactical today. Uh, Rogue specializes in urban survival, I specialize in forestry survival and what we're going to do today is I'm going to mix things up a little bit. I'm going to show you guys how to make an Arapuka bird trap. Now this trap uh, specializes in catching birds, squirrels, and other small critters alive. It does not kill them, does not injure them, and you can just gather them and put them out humanely yourself. It's one of the best ways about this trap. So it's best uh, best suited for birds, however, and I'll show you guys how to set that up today. This trap can be used in urban and forestry survival situations, mostly because birds are abundant in both situations here. Typically speaking, I'd rather use a machete to cut down bamboo. It's just a lot quicker. Machetes work a lot better for that situation. However, today I'm testing out my Husqvarna uh, camp axe. It's actually hand forged, made in Sweden. Uh, I believe the same company that makes these axe heads also make either the Wetterling or the Granson's Burke. Uh, Granson's Burke, but it's an excellent axe from what I've been told. Not really tested it out yet, so testing it out today. It comes pretty sharp. Out of those two pieces, I should be able to get enough. Uh, if not, I can always just cut more. Either way, it's a pretty good setup. We'll go ahead and cut these down to size and I'll show you exactly what you need to do. The best thing about bamboo is all this stuff you're cutting off of here can be used as bedding for a uh, shelter as well. Three inches off the ground, just stay pretty warm. It works just like spruce or pine does. The tax so far has impressed me quite a bit. It's uh, doing pretty much about as good as a machete would do for me. So uh, I'll probably keep using this for a while. Pretty good axe. I like it. I'll tell you what, a really good axe you guys could use is the uh, camp axe made by Mass, or it's branded by Mass Tactical. I can't remember who makes it. Uh, however, go to the Master All Survival Knowledge website and it's on there. It's a pretty good knife, or a pretty good axe, I mean. But if you're on a budget, this is a pretty good knife or axe as well. If I can get the name of it right. Just need to clear all this crap off of here. Get these as straight as possible and as good as possible. That's the best thing about this trap as well is you want to make sure all of your stuff is absolutely as straight as possible. The next step in the process is to take an axe. It's just our uh, saw. I mean, see, I can't get my tools right today. And uh, you just want to take a couple pieces about the size of your arm. Uh, so these are about the size of my arm here, maybe a little bit longer. Cut them about the same size. And then you're just going to go a little bit less each time. So uh, pick up the one that I just cut right here. And I'll just measure it out here. So I'll drop this one over here, my base. And these are your base sticks, and you're basically just pyramiding these up all along the way. But this one's this long. I'm going to go ahead and cut it down probably about right here, right before this notch. And then you just want to measure that one to the other one as well that you just cut and just keep getting the same size. You know, you need two of the same size for each set. And uh, again, it's just a pyramid. So you're like here, 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 
here until you get really tiny up top and it creates a pyramid shape. I'll actually go ahead and show you a picture of that now. I'm using live bamboo because it, it does have more of a uh, give to it. It's a lot stronger than dead bamboo is. Uh, not to mention that if you use sticks for this, live sticks are going to be generally stronger. Um, but I also hate killing trees. It's just something I don't like to do. So usually I will find pretty decently dead sticks that are uh, not rotted, of course. Kind of the same thing goes for like a hearth drill and a bow drill or any kind of spindle that you'd use for a friction fire. You want your hearth, your you know fireboard, you want that to be relatively dead, you know, no moisture in there, but you want it strong enough to where it's not going to just crack or anything like that. Same principle goes for these things. Got a pile over here. Let's get to work. So, <clears throat> what I've done is I've went ahead and cut off all the ones I want. I believe this should make a good size trap. Uh, generally speaking, you know, you're just going to go down and down and down until you just get to a point where you really don't need to go any further. I'll explain that a little bit further in the, you know, as we go on in the clip. Uh, so what we're going to do now is we're going to take our base sticks, the longest ones we have, which are these two. I'm going to measure my rope on one from the very end of it here, and then I'm going to pinch it off, and I'm going to come back on it. Usually about half, you can do uh, double the length. It just really depends on how much is there. So uh, we'll just we'll do about the size and a half of it. So about that long should be good, and you may have to remeasure that, but uh, that's about what I find useful for me. So we'll go ahead and cut that off, and then we want two of these which are exactly like this. And this is just for the temporary trap. Now, if you want to double trap it or permanent trap it, uh, you're simply just going to take and notch every single one of these that you lay together. You're just going to tie it off onto the actual main frame. So uh, it works relatively good that way. You have a permanent trap set up and it's reusable. So that's a big plus to this. But uh, for now, I'm just going to show you the temporary trap. I'm going to go ahead and notch my traps actually. Or not my traps, but my base sticks. And that just allows the rope to stay in place once you start really carving in on this. So at each end of it, I'm just going to place a little notch just for that paracord to go into. Pretty cool little trap, actually. What we're going to do now is make sure you tie your lashings on this the way that, you know, just uh, a square lashing like this. You want to put notches in it, make sure it's good. Pull it tight, make sure it's not going to just pull apart, you know, do do box knots, whatever you knot you want to do with it. Once it's like this, you're just going to go ahead and flip it around and create an X out of it. And what this does is it allows it to pull up and allows you to place your snare in there or your box trap. So we're going to go ahead and layer some of these up and show you how that's done. Going with the next size down, of course. So I went ahead and got it crafted. This is what it looks like when it's a permanent one. And uh, again, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut all these little extra things off, but uh, it doesn't really take much cordage to do it. It's a little bit more than what you probably wanna do in a survival situation. However, over time, you know, you could definitely uh, may be able to do this once you craft some natural cordage, things like that. Uh, but for just the purposes of the video and be able to move this thing around, I went ahead and made a permanent one. And uh, hopefully I can catch a bird in it today and show you that too. Because it doesn't kill the bird, I am gonna use this trap and then I'll set it free for you guys. But, kind of see how that works. It's a pretty nice little trap. And I'll show you what to do with the top of it. So once you have your bird in the actual trap underneath here, you don't want to have to go through underneath the bottom to pick it up and get it out. What you're going to want to do is actually be able to go through the top of the trap to get this bird out of here. Um, so the way to craft that, if you have the temporary trap, the X goes across with the ropes. All you do is just the last like setup of it. You have this little square space up here. All you do is just line that, and you don't go back and forth, you know, over and across. You just one, two, three, four, five. You know, just line it across, just like I'm doing with these bamboo things here. If it's a permanent trap, you're still going to have that hole at the top. But what you do is you just take on the last setup, and you just take a do the X thing on the last top bit of it. Or you can uh, keep the X across the entire thing and then lash it and make it even more secure. Uh, but what I've done is i just cut a couple pieces of bamboo. It doesn't really matter what you put in here. Um, you want it to be appealing to a bird, but not too appealing. Because they're more worried about the food underneath this trap than they are anything. And they're definitely not going to do this. And most of the time you can even trick them. Like, I've seen people not even have to put lashings on top uh, of the trap. Just simply because a bird is smart enough to know that they're not going to fly into something to hop out. And this is bigger than most birds is. Uh, this, this size is designed for sparrows, but this trap can be set to catch 
basically anything you, as long as you make it big enough. So the bigger you make it, the better it is, you know. Uh, So now that you have your trap actually done and set up and everything, uh, you're going to want to go ahead and just get the stuff for your trigger. Now the trigger is what makes the trap fall with all traps and again trap placements, gating, that kind of thing is all a necessity of trapping. You want to make sure you set this up in the area, maybe a field, something like that that a bird's going to want to go to. You put that food source in there, they go to it. You can even camouflage it. All that stuff I cut off there, if I didn't use some of it for bedding, I can even camouflage this trap with this if I wanted to. Because certain birds like crows and maybe some other Amazonian type birds and stuff are very, very intelligent and they do not fall for traps very easily. So just to show you what we got for the trap, you're going to need two sticks that you'll measure uh, based on the back of your trap and I'll show you what I mean by that in just a few moments. It doesn't have to be too straight but it, it works better if they are. These is about as straight as I can find right now in a pinch. Uh, you're going to want a Y-shaped stick, carve a number 7 notch in that, uh, just right there, which is just straight back and down at an angle. And then you're going to want your trigger stick also, which is what folds up into here. And uh, I carved a flat point on this one to make it hairier, easier to come off and it also works with the number 7 notch. I'll show you how to set this up. What you'll do is you'll go ahead and take your Y shape, find the side that the notch is facing you, we'll lift it up, we'll place it under here for now. Uh, this one right here will go here and then what happens is it causes this Y stick to go back like this and that's where you're going to rest your two long sticks on. This is the part where you measure your long sticks. You want to figure out where this is and how far back these need to go. I've already got these pre-measured but you can get the idea of it. And You'll stick them into the corner, the far corner of the main back of this. And then what we'll do is we'll kind of readjust this and just kind of place them up here. And again, this is a very, very hairy system. It takes uh, very little effort to set this off. So, And again, you want to make sure it's very hairy anyways because birds are uh, pretty smart about how they set up traps and stuff. And I actually want to flip this one around and make more area for it to get in there. We'll set that up as hairy as we can get it and that's how it sets up. So your wash shape comes back. About set it there. You wash it, comes back. This one rests up against it. Uh, once these sticks are your trigger sticks, the bird comes in here, fiddles around, gets on these, plop, comes down on top of them. They can't fly out. There's no room to actually come out of here. And I want to readjust this a little. But there's no room for them to actually come out of here. Uh, and then the top of it, once you come to it, you just pull these little things out. Make sure your hands are right here. Go underneath, grab it, pull it out. You're good to go. Reset your trap and you're good for another day. Uh, again, you can use this trap to catch squirrels, birds, rabbits, all kinds of stuff, but it's the best for squirrels for what I've found. You're better off using a snare trap or something like that for uh, rabbits. And squirrels, you can kind of find squirrels in here, but squirrels are really smart. They're easy to maneuver around, so they can try to find ways out. Let's set this thing up with some bird seeds, and I'll show you how you What I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to take a handful of seeds. I'm just going to kind of dump them in through the top up here, right along this. Just kind of scatter them out underneath here and what will happen is a bird will come underneath here grab this will get on this and as you've seen before they'll just fall and they'll get trapped in here I'm trying to make sure all my openings are covered up that kind of thing and again you can even further camouflage this by throwing some leaves on it that kind of thing because uh, they're they're not really going to care much about it but it doesn't hurt to camouflage anything We'll leave it here for a little while and see if we catch anything. We may not. Alright guys, so I've had this out here for a few hours now and uh, not caught anything yet. There's definitely birds chirping in the background, but uh, the typical feeders and stuff just aren't getting anything either. So today just may not be the day. However, for all traps, the best thing you can do is go out and set several of these. Have a trap line going on. Uh, you know, if you have 10, 12 traps compared to just uh, a couple here, it, your odds are increased drastically. Either way, this has been the Arapuka Bird Trap. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'm going to leave it set out and try to catch something. I'll try to update you guys whenever uh, the time comes. But this is one of the best traps for catching live birds, squirrels, that kind of thing. Uh, it's the best for squirrel, or for birds, and there's plenty of other traps out there. Again, my name is Wiggle with Wiggles Outdoors. Go check out my channel, and uh, definitely go down below and subscribe to Mass Tactical. All kinds of great tactical information on here, as well as urban survival. If you're into urban survival, this channel is one of the best for it. Also go to the Facebook group and check out the Warrior Drop. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Like, subscribe, and comment. So I'm not going to go into too much details about that, but just know that that is a key factor of preparation. Now, the practice aspect of this comes down to, by now, you should have the ability to create uh, evacuation plans, create 